I am playing a 1972 harpsichord built by Frank Hubbard uh, in Waltham, Massachusetts. It's a copy of a Rooker's Tascan Ravelmont. Now the Flemish were the most, made the most highly prized instruments. And when the French started really improving their building skills, they considered the Flemish instruments the most wonderful. So they took the Flemish and they expanded them. They added another keyboard, they added length. This was called a ravalement. My French is not very good, so I apologize. However, it's essentially a souped up version of the original. And this wonderful resonant instrument is a, as I said, a very good copy of one of those. It's got three sets of strings and two keyboards with which I operate these sets of strings. The levers here turn the, the strings on and off. What they're doing is turning the plectrum in and out of plucking position. Because remember, the harpsichord is a plucked instrument. And since it is plucked, it's not able to allow the player to vary volume gradually by means of pressure, as does the piano, as does the guitar. The poor harpsichord cannot do that, but it can do many other wonderful things. We have these keyboards that we can push in and out. The upper keyboard is tuned to the same pitch as the lower, but they have a slightly different color, which is caused by the distance in the plucking point from where the string is attached. As the plucking gets closer to the middle of the string, the sound is more fluty and mellow. It's beginning to sound twangy because it's winter, and the instrument suffers quite a bit in this kind of weather. It's suffered some uh, changes in dryness and moisture, and it's extremely sensitive. So it's starting to sound twangier than it really should. The upper keyboard is more twangy because it's, the strings are being cl puck, plucked closer to where they're attached. I can combine them by shoving that keyboard in. And then I can go up here for contrast. I can add yet a third set of strings called a forefoot. It adds the octave. At most, I can pluck three sets of strings at once with each key. But of course, I don't want to sound like that, so I have to be sure to hit that uh, all together. Then I have another color, which is known as the buff stop. I call it the lute stop because it sounds kind of like a lute. It's very nice in combination with this, as we can hear in My Lady Carrie's Dompe. So that makes a very nice combination. The instrument is on a stand which was built especially for me by the Hubbard Shop, now of Framingham, Massachusetts. It's an oak stand and it allows me to play standing up, as you can see. Especially in an ensemble situation, it allows for greater projection of the instrument and of myself physically. And I think that it projects even as a solo instrument better because the sound seems to come out of the bottom as well. The whole instrument resonates. The harpsichord is a plucking instrument. And the plucking mechanism consists mainly of this jack. As you can see, there are three jacks for each one of my keys. Harpsichords can vary as to how many jacks they have, how many sets of strings. This instrument has the three sets of strings, three rows of jacks. The jack sits on the end of the key, which is essentially a long piece of wood extending all the way into the instrument. On the end of the key, the jacks are sitting. When I depress the front of the key, the back end pushes the jacks up, and on the way up, the plectrum plucks the string. Then there's an ingenious little flexible tail at the end and it falls back down so, and doesn't pluck again, of course, it doesn't have the force. And the, the little red piece of felt acts as the damper. In the winter, you can have a lot of trouble with dampers, especially if the instrument is sensitive and finely made. And when I, I'll show you how the, the uh, jacks go up when I depress the keys. And since they do fly up like that, we must have the jack rail on. That keeps the jacks from flying out and gives you a consistent touch.
A lot of times the jack rail over the course of many years with an instrument will shrink and then begin to rattle around. This one is still pretty tight. <laughs> Upstairs for contrast. I don't think I have anything else to say, except to thank you all so very much. Steve, the wonderful cameraman, and then David, who put the whole thing together, David Barnes, and Joel, whose name I, whose last name I can't recall, but, but he was fixing my microphone. I had to look down the front of my dress several times. And then John Ostendorf, of course, who was producing, and then there's a lovely light man, whose name I can't recall, but he went for sandwiches. And of course, we thank him too. And that's all I have to say, really. <laughs>